Shalom, we are here once again. No praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakat Kadash. So, I mean, what do you want to kick it off with? Where do we, where do we begin? Let's read the, I'll start at Isaiah 19 and 1. Read it in the NLT. So, Isaiah 19 and 1. So, this message came. This message came to me concerning Egypt. Look, the Lord is advancing against Egypt, riding on a swift cloud. The idols of Egypt tremble, the hearts of the Egyptians melt with fear. So this is speaking about spiritual Egypt, which is America. You dig? So, Israelites are so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. And when they said Egyptians, it's really talking about like it's really talking about like like everybody like, yeah, like Americans like Babylonians yeah 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 so if you're a Jake that's born here technically that makes you American you got an American citizenship remember Paul said that the minute he's about to execute him he's like is it lawful to execute a Roman citizen so he knew when to exercise his citizenship so that's all it means when it says Egyptian I know some people might read it and be like oh that's talking about the ancient Egyptians they get all confused. Right. Read so, it again from the top. It says this Isaiah 19 and 1. This message came to me concerning Egypt. Look, the Lord is advancing against Egypt, riding on a swift cloud. The idols of Egypt tremble. The hearts of the Egyptians melt with fear. The hearts of the Egyptians melt with fear. So two-thirds of Jake, their hearts are gonna melt with fear, and also the other nations that are in America because America is known as a melting pot. You got every nation that's in this land. When it's in that swift cloud, it's talking about a chariot, the so-called UFO. The second verse, it says, I will make the Egyptians fight against Egyptian, brother against brother, neighbor against neighbor, city against city, province against province. Yeah, and that's talking about a dystopia society right there. Pretty much a collapse, a collapse system, a collapse society. So people are moving around with all this, the lawlessness in their heart. Civil war. Civil war. Martial law. So picture a scenario, a scenario like that. You know, remember when we, remember when we saw that movie, Civil War? Yeah. And it was just complete chaos. And check this out. If there was to be a civil war. It wouldn't, it wouldn't even be looking too good for the U.S. Because if you got the U.S. military that's stretched out in the Middle East or wherever, you know, getting ready for World War III, and how are you going to defend this land mass in a civil war scenario? Right. It's going to be very difficult, you know. The military might have more advanced weaponry, but as far as, like, the American citizens, you know, they have a lot of guns. They, they, they got numbers to them. So that makes sense when you really come to think of it. Like, like there's a civil war. It's, there's nobody you're going to be able to call to save you. Right. Ain't going to be no more dialing 911. You're on, you're on your own at that point. And you better hope and pray that the most high is on your side. Because right. everybody out here is ill-equipped. Maybe if you like from one of these like Bible Belt towns or places like that, where you have like your firearms and all that, but... A lot of people, they'll be ill-equipped for civil wars to crack off. Well, yeah, in northern states, because right. you know how in northern states, they're, they're more they're more harsh when it comes to, to gun laws. Right. Texas, you go carry a gun right Yeah, like you can't open carry in New York right. or in Pennsylvania. Or yeah, in the East Coast in general. Or in D.C. Sure. Like, come on, let's be real. It's almost like going down south. It's like a different world out there. Yeah. It's like a different world. Jake's even talk different. They behave differently. Then 19 and uh, 3 says the Egyptians will lose heart and I will confuse their plans. They will plead with their idols for wisdom and call on spirits, mediums, and those who consult the spirits of the dead. They're going to say, oh, Jesus Christ, oh, help us. 
remember that woman in Chicago that got shot by the, by the police officer? Yeah. You saw the video? What were her last words? She was like, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. And then it was almost like it just woke up the demon in the cop. And then her last words was like, I'm sorry. Right? Yeah, she like, no. like, I'm no. sorry, I'm sorry. But you jakes, man, you shouldn't be calling on the name of Jesus because that's that's an idol. You know? When we was in uh hardcore slavery, that was the God that they presented to us. A picture of Caesar goes through. Right. You go to your grandmother's house, what do they have up on the wall? Or what they might have up on the wall. You see like a picture of Jesus Christ hung up on a cross or whatever. You go to a church, you see the same thing. Right. So it's just been like conditioned in our minds that oh this is the Lord this is what he looked like which is really white supremacy that's being pushed out right before our eyes and, you know it goes into our minds the name Jesus that was beaten into you yeah exactly you know you get a children's bible with images in it it's not going to be images of so called black people it's going to be images of Caucasians I remember why is that at my house, we used to have a picture of, uh, you could say Caesar Gorgera, I guess, but it really, it was a, it was a Jake, but he had dreads oh, yeah. on, on it. I was like, wow. I remember I seen a picture at somebody's house. It, it, look, it looked like, like Jesus, but you know, they had brown skin. It looked like he had a, had a Jerry Club or something. <laughs> That's what it looked like. So, I've been in 1904. Jesus was Dominican. <laughs> <laughs> so I will hand Egypt over. So I will hand Egypt over to a hard, cruel master. A fierce king will rule them, says the Lord, the Lord of heaven's armies. Fierce king shall rule them. And you go to every state, any country, you know, you're not gonna have a righteous leader, a so-called righteous leader. I mean, look who's trying to get into office now. You got Donald Trump. You also have uh, Kamala Harris. Which I wouldn't be surprised if it goes towards Kamala Harris. You know, that's that's what I'm leaning towards. Trump, he shook some shit up when when he got uh, hit up. They had the the, the Democrats panicking. My 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 opinion on that has changed. Like, I'm not sure if. If it was a publicity stunt, or if they really actually did try to ice Trump. Yeah. Because when you think about it, I mean, there's so many measures of security that you're supposed to go, go to just to even get near the president. Right. So it's like, how you... It's, that's what I'm saying. It's all orchestrated. How you lapse on that? That's the perfect word for it. Orchestrated. So, so you know, it's definitely some, some fishy going on. Either way, the perception is Trump almost got ice. That's the perception. That's the headline in the media. Yeah, I don't know how you accent. You could just shoot somebody just in their ear by habit's chance. Like, you was aiming for their ear. That's a difficult thing. Uh -huh. Isaiah 19 and 5 says, The waters of the Nile will fail to rise and flood the fields. The riverbed will be parched and dry. The canals of the Nile will dry up and the streams of Egypt will stink with rotting reeds and rushes. All the greenery along the riverbank and all the crops along the river will dry up and blow away. Yeah, That's and going into the, the famine. Yeah, and it's also going to be blown away by thermal destruction. Right. Because picture it like this. America is just going to become a desert like Las Vegas. Pretty much, but you're going to have nuclear fallout. Picture that in your minds. It's gonna be like a wasteland. Remember the um, TV show Fallout? You seen how when she left the vault? Yeah. And she went outside, like everything just looked like dead. Like desolate. No like. trees, no greenery. Right. Says the so let's, let's keep this in perspective. If this was talking about ancient Egypt, how come when you go over there to that side of the world today, I mean, you still see the Nile River, right? right? You still see rivers, you still see some greenery. You know, you know what I mean? So, either this is talking about 
what Reset is talking about, America, and this is a prophecy that's waiting, that we're waiting to uh, see fulfilled, or um, this is talking about um, a future, well, not maybe maybe not future, but uh, a current event, like like, um, like like the presence, which obviously it doesn't ma it doesn't match up with the presence. So. Because in Egypt now, they got a city, I believe it's called like Cairo. It's like a whole like city. They got buildings, all that kind of stuff out there. So either this is getting ready to happen like we said it is, or this happened already. But obviously it didn't happen already because we still see how it is on that side of the world. You know, it's still some greenery. We still got rivers. It's Isaiah 19 and uh, 8. It says the fishermen, the fishermen will lament for lack of work. Those who cast hooks into the Nile will groan, and those who use nets will lose heart. Yeah, because there's, there's, there's not going to be any more commerce, buying and selling. There will be no flax for the harvesters, nor no threads for the weavers. They will be in despair, and all the workers will be sick at heart. That's it, Arnold. Yeah, that's it. Get, uh, please ask because, what is it, 12? 12 and what? Is it 12? Ecclesiasticus chapter 12 verse 1 when thou will do good know to whom thou doest it so shalt thou be thanked for thy benefits do good to the godly man and thou shalt find a recompense and if not from him yet from the most high right so in this world all you really see is people going about being selfish. You know, they don't think about the next man, and they really just think about themselves. And so that's Esau's mentality and them hope. Because how is it that he has control over the system? He, he runs to everything, every facet of your life, the educational system, the food system, banks, housing how is it that he has control and access to all of that but he doesn't make it fair and balanced to where jake can can advance within this society you know that's what these conscious people be saying they're like oh we need to come up with a solution to to, to bridge the gap between wealth to bridge the gap of wealth between blacks and uh, people of color compared to you know so called so -called white people. is you're never going to come up with a, a situation where blacks can prosper in America. That's ultimately because it's the ground that it curses. And Esau is our enemy, so why would they do anything to our, for our benefit? Right, and, and I know that you got Jake's that are like part of the 1%, whatever, that might make it out of the hood, but that's few and in between. Right. You know, if this brother has it, then I want every brother to have it. You know what I'm saying? That's real success. That's real success. Right. It says, um, third verse. It says, There can no good come to him that is always occupied in evil, nor to him that giveth no alms. Right. So what do you think is going to ultimately be the fate of Esau? Death. Destruction. Destruction. Slavery. All that good stuff says give to the godly man and help not a sinner do well unto him that is lowly but give not to the ungodly hold back thy bread and give it not unto him it says help not a sinner so who profits off a divorce 
Who pushes marriage? Right. It's society. Esau and his society. And then so, read it again. What did it say? Prosper not on what? And do well unto him that is lowly. Give not unto the godly. Hold back thy bread and give it not unto him, lest he overmaster thee thereby. Lest he overmaster thee thereby, for else thou shalt receive twice as much evil for all the good thou shalt have done unto him. Alright, so Esau has a system and a society set up to where he profits off of sin and wickedness. Like I said, who profits off of divorce in a society? Esau. Who profits off of um, relationships breaking up and then, you know, you got a uh, what is it called? Child court? Family court? Family court. Come on, man. Why you got a court system set up like that? That shit is all the racket. We roll over another man's family. Right. That's all the racket. That ain't right. See, it's the little things. It's the little things. You could really argue it's not a little. I mean, having control and being a third party over a person's relationship. That's crazy. That's crazy. Think about it. Child support. You know what I'm saying? Um, read it again. It says, Do well unto him that is lowly, but give not to the ungodly. Hold back thy bread and give it not unto him, lest he overmaster thee thereby. For else thou shalt receive twice as much evil for all the good thou shalt have done unto him. For the most high hated sinners and will repay vengeance unto the ungodly and keepeth them against the mighty day of their punishment. Continue. That's it. So who passes all these legislations and pushes and pushes the alphabet and ginger throughout the world? Esau. They'll sit here and tell you that they can't do anything to cater towards so-called blacks in America that, and you know come up with legislation that benefits them, but they'll cater to the alphabet community. Right. They'll cater to the small hat community. There was a clip of Kamala Harris. She said that, you know, I'm not going to do nothing that just benefits black people. I'm going to do something that benefits everybody. That goes to show you. It's hypocritical. So if they wanted to do something to, to better the conditions of Jake in this country, they could, but they're not. This place is a hell home. That's why it's called the Valley of the Shadow of Death. That's why you just gotta find your niche in this, in this society and to, and to stick to it. You know, we found ours. Kicking the truth out. Make sure, you're, make sure your leisure activities are in balance and in accordance with how you're supposed to live according to the Bible. You know what I'm saying? And then you'll find yourself in less, in less weird situations or bad situations. Right. Like, for example, if you get pulled over by the cops, you already know there's like, agree with your adversary quickly. Right. You know, don't try to be a hothead. Right. What you gonna do? I remember when I was younger, I when I, the first day I got my car, my grandfather, he said, now if the cops pull you over, just do what they say. Don't give them a hard time. You can't hold court in the street. He would always tell me that. He would tell all of us that. You can't hold court in the street. So you just gotta do what they tell you. You know, we're under oppression. Like I know my, I know all my tags is up to date. My license is clean. But as soon as, especially when you're driving at night and you see them lights beaming behind you to pull you over, it's just your heart just drops for some reason. I don't know, you know when everything is all valid, that just goes to show you we're oppressed. That's because we don't have white privilege. <laughs> That's why. I got a free We've always gotten the short end of the stick throughout history in America. So it's like anything good that happens to you, you don't really expect it so much. Um, 
start at the eighth verse. It says Psalm 71 and 8. It says, Let my mouth be filled with thy praise and with thy honor all day. Cast me not off in the time of old age. Forsake me not when my strength faileth. For mine enemies speak against me, and they that lay wait for my soul to take counsel together. And you see, like Esau, you know, they conspire and have these, you know, secret meetings to figure out how to keep the people on this side down, how to keep them in oppression. Because they, the top wicked elite, know our uprise is their downfall. Yeah, that's why they hold their world, their world Economic Forum meetings mm -hmm. to discuss how they're going to go forward in the future in terms of finances and money. You know, your average so-called Jake, they don't know nothing about that. They don't come up with meetings together about, oh, how are we going to help people in Africa? Right. You know, if anything, they come together and, and conspire how they're going to rob the people of the resources. What are we gonna do about the homeless problem? They don't give a shit. They wanna, they wanna keep you in debt, remember that. Because as long as you're in debt to them, you're a slave to their system. Yep. As long as you gotta pay taxes, you're a slave. They don't want you to be self-sufficient. I mean, come on. Can you really sit as you own land when you gotta pay property taxes on it? Right. Who's a slave from out the womb? That's the whole point of the birth certificate, the social security number. Yeah, because those are adhesion contracts. You can't function within a society without having some something that, that, that tracks you back to the government. That's why, that's what incarceration is all about. You think a Jake that kills another Jake, he's getting arrested because he took another life? No, he took the life of another taxpaying citizen. Someone who could have helped fund Esau and his system. So now you got to go sit up and pay for that. Free labor. It's a win-win for them. Right. It's a win-win. This is uh, Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 15. It says, Woe unto him that giveth his neighbor drink, that putteth thy bottle to him, and maketh him drunken also, that thou mayest look on their nakedness. Meaning, woe unto people that set people up for failure, that set people up to fall into traps. Right. That's exactly, that's exactly what it is, it's entrapment. You, you put the wickedness forth, you show them the wickedness. Like they showed you that with, um, who's the guy that Snowfall, the movie was really based off of? Um, Rick Ross. Yeah, Rick Ross, how he was working for the CIA. But then when it came, they arrested his ass and put him in jail. <laughs> That's Esau for you. They set you up but, just but to... Who's, but who's putting the drugs in the communities? Who's putting the guns? Who's putting thoughts of violence out there? In the, in the music. So, Esau has a lot to pay for. Because then, this is your world. We're just living in it. Right. So if you wanted to, this could be a righteous country. You could, you could predicate the principles and morals of, of the society of the Bible if you wanted to. Right. But you don't. Because this place is wicked. Yeah, this place is foul. I forgot, I was watching a video and there was this dude, him and his wife got a divorce but his wife was cheating and she st he still had to pay her. That's wicked. Yeah. So, uh, read it again. Habakkuk 2 and 15. Woe unto him that giveth his neighbor drink that putteth thy bottle to him, and makest him drunken also, that thou mayest look on their nakedness. Yeah, and then they'll, and then they'll sit there and be like, see, look at these people, see how violent they are? Yep. See how foolish they are? S super predators. It says, thou, thou art filled with shame for glory. Drink thou also, and let thy foreskin be uncovered. The cup of the Lord's right hand shall be turned unto the shameful spewing shall be on the, thy glory. Yeah, so what's going to happen is everything that Esau has done to the Israelites is going to come back on them. You reap what you sow. And you see how it is nowadays. 
They're being exposed for their wickedness. Left and right. So little by little, we're seeing the downfall of this man's kingdom. And he's so, he's been ruling for so long and hasn't been brought down yet. So he thinks he's gonna rule this kingdom forever. He doesn't understand that the Lord is coming to soil all his plans. Yeah, like America had its glory days, but it's over now. Dude, the American dream is over. That shit is over with. You got, the, like, the middle class has been completely eradicated. You only have the haves and the have-nots. People all the way on top and the people all the way on the bottom. Like, buying a home, that used to be like a, a realistic goal that people had. Now, that shit is kind of unrealistic, like, for the overwhelming majority. Yeah. That's always been the plan. At least in our lifetime. They didn't, they didn't want it to be where the next generation will be set up and be prosperous. They didn't want it to be that way. Right. That really stopped with the, I believe that's Gen Z. The millennials, which are, you know, would be like the people today of a certain age group that would be able to buy things like cars and houses. That's like, that seems so far-fetched. I told you about the thing, it's called doom spending, where people, they can't see themselves building a future here because of how expensive everything is. So they just spend their money on vacations and just, just things that make you feel good in the moment. On top of that, they'll put it on a credit card. Yep. You ever heard of a? I was reading about something called the zombie economy. Let me get it. Because they say that seventy percent of people in America they don't have savings. They live check to check. Yeah. What was it like? They don't have like a thousand dollars saved up. Yeah. And then I heard that if you have, I think it was maybe like three thousand dollars, you're already like top fifteen percent of like wealth in the country. Three thousand yeah, dollars, something like that. Three thousand dollars to spend. Cause think about it, most people don't have savings. They said that they said seventy percent of people don't have savings. Yeah. What was it? Seventy percent? I could see that. I could definitely see that. You got like, if somebody's car goes down, that shit might just have to sit for like a month or so till they can build up the funds to get it fixed. Like, that's really how it is in Babylon. It said, what's that saying? What go, what will go? What could go wrong will go wrong. So. All it takes is one thing, and you, you'll fall back on all your bills, and you'll never catch up. Yeah, and then it's like, you can have the money, but it's, that money got to go to a certain amount of bills. Right. So I ain't got it for this. So it's a high cost of living. Right. I got that uh, zombie, econ zombie economy. Zombie are companies, zombies are companies that earn just enough money to continue operating and service debt but are unable to pay off their debt. So that's what a lot of people do. That's people got three, four, five credit cards, maxing them shits out. And then you just paying, you know, not even the whole balance on the card. You just paying just the, that, that monthly yeah. bit just to say you could pay it. Yeah, I heard, yeah, so the question is, is it true that 70% of Americans don't have more than $1,000 saved up? So yeah, that's what I heard. Yeah. Apparently they don't. They just these people maxing out credit cards and they just paying minimum payments on their credit cards. That's not even doing nothing for the interest. So that's just that again, that's that cycle that just keeps you in. You just paying and it's never it's a never ending. Yeah, here's an article right here. It says forty and this is from March twenty twenty three. Forty nine percent of Americans have less or no savings than a year ago and only 43 percent said they could cover an emergency of a thousand dollars or more what percent you said 42 or 32 43 percent said 40. they said that they could cover an emergency of a thousand dollars or more right so you take your car to you take your car to the shop that's it right there and you're gonna pay to get your car fixed or you're gonna be late on rent this month yeah, you go to the mechanic, depending on what's wrong with your car. You, know, you drop it anywhere from five hundred to a thousand dollars, twelve hundred dollars. Right. And that's if you don't have a warranty on your car, because you know a lot of people they lease and they get a car note. 
Let's say you got the Cardinal going. What is that? Six hundred dollars a month. Yeah. Maybe less. On top of that, car insurance. What's it called? This is this. This, this is an all-time high of cars getting repossessed because the interest rate on these cars, yep. people are paying like $800 a month. That's not even the insurance included. You're paying $800 just for the car. Yeah, and they said that they're not, the Fed isn't going to slash interest rates anytime soon. How could they? If ever. This place is out of here. You can only do that in a thriving economy. If the, if the economy isn't thriving, there ain't going to be no tax breaks or interest rate cuts. Yeah, because in theory, if you slash the interest rates, what is that going to do? It's going to lead to a bigger debt bubble. People are just going to go out and spend more. Exactly. And they owe more. Mm -hmm. So it makes it worse. Imagine having three credit cards, you maxed all them shits out, and you just got to pay. You're paying just the, the little bit, that little monthly bit. You'll never get ahead. Esau got your ass. And they said that this is the lowest number in full-time jobs in a long time. I can see that. So they're seeing how... The signs of the times that we're living in is comparable to how it was in 2008. You know what I'm saying? I gotta, I gotta get this. This is Proverbs 22 and 7. It says the rich ruleth over the poor, and the borrower is servant to the lender. He that soweth iniquity shall reap vanity, and the rod of his anger shall fail. So again, that debt means you're in servitude to whoever lent you the money. Now you got to do whatever you could do to try and, and get the money to pay your bills. Which leads to people breaking laws. And, you know, people just doing a whole bunch of unrighteous shit. That's it on that. <laughs> got a piece of Start at verse six and read it in the end notes. Because I see a lot of these Jakes talking about the election, which really we can, we can care less about the election because we already know that presidents are selected. You know, it's already pre predetermined who's going to be the next president. That's why I hate niggas. Don't come, don't come to me. Don't come around me talking about that voting shit and how our ancestors died forever. I don't, I don't want to hear that shit no more. It's an illusion. I don't want to hear it no more. It's all an illusion because the Electoral College exists. I mean, did y'all exactly. forget? Exactly. And even they don't matter either. I remember when they used to meet and learn about that in, in like school. And it was like, so what is the point of voting then if the Electoral College is the one who picks who the next president is? Exactly. And then no, no teacher can answer but again, people, they don't, they, it's like they don't know. They just do shit just because. They don't know why they do it. They just do it. Anyway, this is Proverbs 9 and 6 in the NLT. Leave your simple ways behind and begin to live, learn to use good judgment. Leave your simple ways behind, learn how to live. Learn how to treat yourself and others. It says, anyone who rebukes a mocker will get an insult in return. Anyone who corrects the wicked will get hurt. Anybody who corrects the wicked will get hurt. So it's like, we're not out here trying to make this crooked system straight. In fact, we don't believe in this system. We want it to collapse so we can build our own system. Exactly. Read it again. Anyone who rebukes a mocker will get an insult in return. Anyone who corrects the wicked will get hurt. Anybody who corrects the wicked will get hurt. We know Esau ain't right. We know his system is not for us. Exactly. We notice this his system. So anything we try and do 
and take things into our own hands, it's gonna be for naught. Like, it's not our system, it's not our chance to rule. So we just gotta just listen to what he says. Exactly, so we're not out here trying to come up with the next economic plan to benefit our community and our people. We're not out here trying to look for the next president uh, to, to, to rule that set of policies for, for the people in our community. Right. We don't care about senators and representatives or none of that stuff. But we all know that even if the Jake does get in a, a high office position, they're puppets. They still got to abide by the rules of the people that's, that, that set up the system to begin with, that hold it up in place. Your you're, 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 you're Jake that you see that's in politics they're nothing more than just props. Right. Cause like, you, all right, let's say Jake, they take things into their own hands. What are you gonna do? Like, what do you really expect to happen? Like wisdom, uh, wisdom of Solomon chapter five, the first verse, it says they made no account of their labors. So they're not gonna do right by you. Say, like, I, imagine me being like, you know what? My people, we built this country, free slave labor, I ain't paying taxes no more. You seen what happened to Wesley Snipes? Like, like West, what do you Wesley, expect? Wesley Snipes, he got hurt. In theory, yes, you are right. You should, you have the right to feel that way. But again, we are in a, we are being oppressed. This is not our land. This is not our kingdom. So you just gotta do, you just gotta do what Esau <laughs> says. You just gotta pay your taxes. Yeah. I mean, if you expect anything good out of this man, then you're just gonna end up disappointed. Right. You expect them to just have a heart and do right by you, you'll be waiting all day. Remember what I said earlier, they care to all these other people in these communities, but then what do they do for, for the people on this side? Correct. Remember during the pandemic, when Moab was catching hell? They did, yeah. they, 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 they made, um... They made a legislation to protect them. Exactly, like that. Yep. So what's up with that? So again, wisdom, they, they make no account of your labor. That goes to show you they're our enemy. This is a Proverbs 9 and 8 in the NLT. So don't bother correcting mockers. Don't bother trying to correct these people that ain't right. That try to gaslight you. Be like, oh, slavery happened hundreds of years ago. It didn't happen to you. Right. Come on, let's, let's be real. We're descendants of slaves, right? And even everybody that's in this land that, that comes from a different country, one way or another, they're tied to colonialism. Their country got colonized. So really, everywhere in this world got colonized and was exploited one way or the other, right? Every, every Jake, every Israelite. So it's like we are owed restitution. Proverbs 9 and 8, NLT, says, So don't bother correcting mockers. They will only hate you, but correct the wise, and they will love you. Yeah, correct the wise. And, you know, since the day that we, we learned this truth, it, it went up for us. We right. learned about many facets of the Bible and how the most high is a just power. He's balanced. And ultimately... He's going to be the one who restores the nation of Israel through his son. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Right. So if you want reparations, if you want prosperity, you're just going to have to wait until the kingdom of heaven. That's what it comes down to. So I can speak for, for, for you. Like We're kingdom-minded. You know, We're not concerned about building a future and a life here in, here in America because we know that this is temporary. Everything that we're going through, is the soul going to be wiped away? So, Proverbs 9 and 9, NLT. Instruct the wise, and they will be even wiser. Teach the righteous, and they will learn even more. Yeah, so, come across somebody that has a good head on their shoulders. Teach them the truth. And... Just, you know, you just hope from there, like, they become teachers, you know, they, they grow more and more. 
You know what I mean? That's the thing, though. This is really just talking about the elect. Yeah, pass it on. Because the, the, the Jake, say if you've met a Jake, whatever, and he seems to be decent, he's not just like a, a nigga, or just a total nigga, he'll like, he'll hear what you're saying, and he, he may even believe it, but is he gonna take that next step? Is he gonna grow in the mate, in the in the faith? Or will it just end knowing he's an Israelite? Yeah, that, that's that's what it seems to be most cases. It just stops knowing you're an Israelite, you stop eating pork, and then that's where that's where it stops with you. Yeah, because Jake will even admit that there's there's no denying that, you know, the people on this side are, are oppressed in this country. Right. You know? And anybody that does say otherwise then you know, you already know if they're bugged out. Right. If, you, if you hear somebody say that, um, America's not a, a a country that that's that's full of bigotry. You know what I mean? This is the land of opportunity. If you hear somebody say that, then you know that they're delusional. Yo. All right, keep walking. I don't want to talk to you. Pull yourself up by your bootstraps. All that kind of talk. So, Proverbs nine and ten says. Fear of the Lord is the foundation of wisdom. Knowledge of the Holy One results in good judgment. Wisdom will multiply your days and add years to your life. If you become wise, you will be the one to benefit. If you scorn wisdom, you will be the one to suffer. And wisdom is found in the Bible. The Bible teaches you how to eat, teaches you how to live, uh, teaches you to even teaches you a banking system, you know what I mean? You know how you have the year Jubilee? Or the, or the uh, how's it go, like every, I think it's like every, uh, maybe 14 years, you gotta forgive somebody's debt? Seven. Seven or 14? Yeah, maybe seven. Look up the law of that.
owe money to foreign countries, foreign entities. So these other countries don't. Let's say you did believe in the year two. These other countries don't believe in that. You know they have their own ways and philosophies. Right. They're lucky in the Chinese to believe in that. When they got their own religion, their own idols. I heard that in certain countries, you can't even bring a Bible with you. Really? Yeah, certain Asian countries. Google that. Many countries, particularly Islamic states, restrict or ban the possession of the Bible, especially for Muslim residents. These countries include Afghanistan, Iran, Libya, Maldives, Morocco, Saudi Arabia, Somalia, Sudan, and Yemen. And so good luck. Also China, North Korea, and Turkey. Yeah, so good luck getting the other nations on the principles of the Bible. That's a lot of places. So hypothetically speaking, you can't you can't do that. If you, even if you wanted to. Get everybody on the same page of the year group. So that you can forgive that. Seventh year shall be a Sabbath of rest unto the land, a Sabbath for the Lord Yahweh. Thou shalt neither sow thy field nor prune thy vineyard. And you see, because when you keep going, because you're gonna you're gonna deplete the land of its resources and its nutrients when you keep harvesting it year after year after year. You don't give it a chance to grow in abundance. So that's why it's important to respect the land Sabbath, but they don't do that here in Babylon. That's one of the reasons why the food that we eat here isn't very nutritious. See this watermelon. Now let's go to um, Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 6. Shall not all these take up a parable against him and a turning and a taunting proverb against him and say, Woe to him that increaseth that which is not his. How long and to him that ladeth himself with thick clay. So the Bible says, woe unto him that increases that which is not his. So how did Esau get America? How did they get this land? They took it from the so-called Native Americans. They broke every treaty that they had with them. So, that's unrighteousness right there. That's something that Esau is going to have to pay for. And what did it say about the big flight? Woe to him that increases that which is not his, how long? And to him that laid it himself with big clay. So, the Hebrew word there for that, for that word clay is I bought you up this means dead. So, when you have a system, a banking system that's predicated upon debt, it's going to ultimately lead to your demise. Because the Bible says that you're not supposed to charge interest to your brother. You're not supposed to charge interest. It's called usury. So, in every facet of your life, and it, it involves credit. You want to get a house, you need credit. When they get a car loan, they need credit. And that's some that's really foul when you really think about it. Like say if I buy something, I don't know, it's hot out, I bought two waters, I bought one for myself, 
well, bought two of them for me, but you say you wanted one. I spent a dollar for the water, but I'm gonna go to you since it's hot outside. Here, it's five dollars. That ain't right. That, I know that's on a low level, but that, but you can understand how wicked that is. Yeah, charging you money for the money that you got from him. Right. That seems to be the business model here in America. They want to keep you poor. Exactly. So that you can be a slave to their system. They'll give you just enough for 30 days. But then, say, you want to like really build like a legacy for, your, for yourself or your family. It's going to be very difficult. So doesn't want us to be a prosperous nation of people. Of course, you were stuck under this capitalist system. So where you gotta pay taxes after the check the land. Let me read it again. Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 6. Shall not all these take up a parable against them and a taunting proverb against them and say, Woe to him that increaseth that which is not his, how long? And to him that ladeth himself with thick clay. Continue. Yeah, this is Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse 8. Because of unrighteous dealings, injuries, and riches got by deceit, the kingdom is translated from one people to another. And that's Esau for you. Like, what, like name something that Esau did of his own merit that helped to establish his, his kingdom. But you got free labor, you winning already. Imagine you starting a business and you hire a bunch of workers and you don't gotta pay them nothing. You starting off in the positive. You starting off in the, in the red, in the black. You already got your head start. So now, and then everything after that, you just build upon that. The, the cotton industry, they made trillions off and then now, I remember, um, I believe it was Elder Apostle Tahar, he was going into it how back in his day, you know, people would make their own clothes at home. Like, people didn't go out and go shopping for clothes. Like, that wasn't a thing. But even if you do have that ability to make your own clothes, you're not the producer of the materials. You gotta go to the store to buy the fabric. You gotta go to your enemy for the one of all things. So yeah. he's making a profit on that as well. You gotta go to this man literally for everything. You might as well read that. You know how to be 28. This is Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 48. Therefore shall thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord Yahweh shall send against thee in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness, and in one of all things, and he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. Right, so you gotta go to your enemy for everything. You don't run a grocery store. You don't have a you don't have enough money to go buy what, acres of land so you can start a whole farm so that you could be a distributor of farm produce. Or meat, you know what I'm saying? Right, you can't you can't afford to buy our own cows, slaughter our own cows, and cook them and all that. Having fresh meat, you can't afford these things. And if you did have the land, you gotta pay taxes on it. Right. So what does that tell you? It tells you that we're under this bad system, and the only way that we're gonna get liberation is when Yahweh Shai comes back. Deuteronomy 28 48. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord Yahweh shall send against thee. And again, this is all the Lord is doing. Us being on the low and Esau ruling over us in this kingdom, it was all designed this way by the Lord. It says, In hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and in the want of all things. He shall put a yoke of iron 
upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. And that, that sounds like chattel slavery to me. Psalms 17 and 13. Yeah, Psalms 17 and 13. I read in the NLT. It says, Arise, O Lord, stand against them and bring them to their knees. Rescue me from the wicked with your sword. By the power of your hand, O Lord, destroy those who look to this world for their reward. But satisfy the hunger of yeah, that, your that, that look towards this world for the reward. But you know, you got Israelites that are looking for handouts or that are looking for you know something that's gonna be significant in their life that's that's gonna benefit them going forward. But they're never gonna find it. And let's just say that you do have wealth, land resources I mean you're gonna lose it anyway at the end of the day because you can't take it with you to the kingdom you, let's let's see Floyd take um, I saw him flex his, his car collection he had like Rolls Royces let's say Floyd makes it let's, let's see him take his, his Rolls Royce paint him to the kingdom that ain't gonna happen because there's not gonna be any more manufacturing of cars in the kingdom so how are you gonna get the cars from the when your car breaks down. You know what I'm saying? Ain't gonna be no cars period in the kingdom. Because the manufacturing and the, and the, distri the distribution of them is insidious to the environment. You see, these oil companies, they go so far to where they'll, just, they'll set up shop in somebody's country and then they won't even care if they end up polluting the land, the water, people's environment that they live in. They don't care. But what they do care about is pleasing their shareholders and lining their pockets. So all that capitalism and buying and selling and commerce of cars and things of that sort is all going to come to an end in the kingdom of heaven. Esau's only concern really is his bottom line. He don't really care about what he does, what effect he has on the people. They'll dump toxic chemicals in your backyard. Like, exactly. I was watching that uh, a, a documentary on like uh, the Forever Chemical and how they was really just dumping that stuff off in like a in like a. What do they call PFOS? That's that's the acronym. PFOS. Yeah, PFOS. Yeah, PFOS. I call it PFOS. <laughs> and it's like, damn, like that's wicked. They literally bought this man's land off of him, like a portion of his land, not the whole, not his entire land, but they bought a portion of it as a conglomerate. Like the corporation bought the land and they dumped that the toxic chemicals on his land but it wasn't technically his land because they bought that portion but then the land is spread into his land like that that's wicked then that man ended up dying with like a certain cancer from that so that goes to show you how Esau get down yeah, remember it says in ezekiel Size, he's gonna visit the land of unwalled, the, the land of unwalled villages. Mm -hmm. So really, what's separating a state from a state? Nothing. Nothing really. Welcome to signs. Exactly. <laughs> so that... whatever you do, like you were saying, whatever you do to a land mass, it can spread and have an effect on other parts of the environment in the area that you may be living in. Yeah, because it was getting in the soil. And then when it gets into the soil, it gets into your water. You damage the air that we all gotta breathe. 
all of us. Him too. This is uh, Psalm 17 and 14 in the last two verses. It says, By the power of your hand, O Lord, destroy those who look to this world for their reward, but satisfy the hunger of your treasured ones. May their children have plenty, leaving an inheritance for their decadence. Because I am righteous, I will see you. When I awake, I will see your face to face and be satisfied. Yeah, so ultimately, we're going to inherit the blessings of the Most High. We have the promise of the world to come. And that's what we're going to be a prosperous people, really. We're not going to have any once in life or complaints. Right. We're not going to need for nothing, right? We'll have everything in forever to enjoy. Remember the Most High said, before you even ask, he's going to already know what you want, y'all. Meaning, he's already going to give it to you. You're not going to have nothing to really complain about. I mean, we, we want the basic necessities in life and then some. Right. You know, food, water, shelter, access to, to riches. You know what I mean? Being able to raise your family righteously. Yeah, your wife, you don't have to worry about your wife divorcing you and breaking up the family and committing adultery. Right. See, it's like the little things is really the, the, the major things. You know, that's what we want out of life. We want all of that stuff to be tightened up. We want completion out of life. Can we really say that we're living in completion here? No. We're lacking in a lot of things, whether it be financially, socially, or even... Um, Morally, right? You see how people are living out here and it ain't righteous. In the kingdom of heaven, that's where we'll all be on the same page. Here, we're not all on the same page. A man, somebody will come out here and tell us, you know, pull yourself up by your bootstraps. You know, we're not trying to hear that shit. But in the kingdom of heaven, we'll all be on the same accord. Right. So, you got more of that? No, or? that was it. All right, so with that, we're going to close. Shalom. Shalom.